I started digging into Ethereum. And I wanted to understand the crypto space at large. Because when somebody tells me, and many people did, don't look at anything else, you're a scammer, you're a shitcoiner, you're a fraud. If I look at something else, that makes me want to look at it. And I started digging into Ethereum. And I realized how incredibly robust an ecosystem it was. The amount, the sheer number of developers, programmers, applications, the ecosystem was bigger than Bitcoin. It's astonishing the network effect and we're bringing in the institutions and they're spreading into Ethereum and everybody else is building products on Ethereum. It's coming at a lightning speed and it's, I don't think the space can catch up with the narrative change that is happening so fast. Raul Paul Ethereum price prediction. The crypto narrative continues to change and Ethereum will lead the charge. I'll be honest, it's getting hard not to switch over my entire Bitcoin stack to Ethereum and this video will explain why. Watch this video if you need to understand how huge an opportunity Ethereum is for the remainder of the year. In this video, macro investor Raul Paul, who accurately predicted the Bitcoin run-up over the last 9 months, speaks on how Ethereum is the new best store of value and will outperform Bitcoin throughout the remainder of the year. He speaks on how the network effect is tracking for Ethereum and is now going parabolic, the move from institutions from investment into Bitcoin to Ethereum, and how Ethereum can run up to $20,000 per Ether this cycle because of its addressable market. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where we go over how Raul Paul has now weighted his crypto portfolio as well as some recent on-chain Ethereum data that suggests that the Ethereum bull run has much further to go. Also, only a tiny percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. And I started digging into Ethereum. And I realized how incredibly robust an ecosystem it was. The amount, the sheer number of developers, programmers, applications, the ecosystem was bigger than Bitcoin. The growth in wallet addresses was about the same pace as Bitcoin. So I'm starting thinking about that. I got sent an article by, um, I think it was the Nidig guys, and they were looking at Metcalfe's law, and I understood Metcalfe's law um, and how it probably applied to Bitcoin. But I asked Remy and actually reached out to Santiago Velez and said, listen, can you help me develop a, a Metcalfe's Law model? Just a simple one. We don't need the complex maths. We need to kind of prove that Bitcoin is basically priced in that. And maybe that stock to flow is representing that in a different way. And again, I'm not trying to refute the stock to flow model. I use it. I love it. Everything Plan B is done is a game changer. Um, and he deserves all the plaudits. But once I started understanding the power of what Bitcoin was, it was clearly a behavioral economics driven model, the best of all. So behavioral economics in Facebook is why Metcalfe's law exists in Facebook is because it originally you bring on your uncle, your aunt, your friend from school, blah, 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 and you create your network of people and you can keep in contact with them and you can communicate with them. And so that became network effects. And then businesses came onto it, creating more network effects, etc. But the shareholders were the ones who got rich, not the users. The shareholders benefited from the exponential revaluation of the network because Metcalfe's law essentially is the value of the network goes up with the more nodes in operation. And so the users were separate from the capital. So the investors got rich and the users got to talk to their friends and then their parents joined Facebook and they all left and <laughs> went to Instagram, etc. But Bitcoin was a groundbreaker. And sorry, all of the Silicon Valley models were basically all of the same. They were all Metcalfe's law. Everything that came out of the internet, from Google to Facebook to Reddit, the whole damn lot of them. And they were all came out of meetings with people like Daniel Kahneman, the one of the godfathers of behavioral economics who basically taught them how to trigger 
dopamine receptors in the brain by like buttons emoticons and how emotion drives behavior because it's all behavior is what you're trying to do but with bitcoin you've created a network driven by behavioral economics which is the network of money and every participant gets rewarded by bringing participants in so that's it creates an incredibly robust network effect. In fact, it's genius. Because more of us who believe in it, the more we attract other people in, the more we all get rewarded for it. So the behavioral incentive is extraordinary. And that is a way to gain adoption for a new money, because otherwise it's very hard to do. It's very hard to get adoption unless you get rewarded. So this is stunningly good. But I wondered how you could value Ethereum because I, I could start to see how I could value Bitcoin and why it is exponential, why we have to use log charts. It's because the network effects of more people mean that the chart is always exponential. And we've only just started. I mean, we've got billions of people to bring onto this. So this is going a lot further. So I've talked about, you know, I have no problem when I use you know, this log chart, for example, it would suggest potentially this rally could take us to 400,000 maybe even a million on an offshoot because of the wall of money that I've talked about as institutions come in. Maybe I'm not. Maybe plan B stock to flow is right and it gets that 288. I don't know. It doesn't really matter right now, but I think be surprised because that's what network effects get more exponential over time. But when I looked at Ethereum, the thing I was told not to look at, I realized that not only was the technology very interesting, and yes, it has problems, and yes, it's very different to Bitcoin, and in fact, it's not even a competitor to Bitcoin. It's just part of a new digital asset ecosystem. I realized that Ethereum was actually probably the basis of the Internet of Value. And the Internet of Value is something hard to get your head around as well. And I'll talk a bit about it later. But basically, anything that you exchange that has value is going to be digitized. And Ethereum is breaking the ground for that. Now, there's the Ethereum 2.0 coming out, which actually hardens it as a platform and lowers the supply and speeds it up and probably cheapens the cost. There are, you know, it, it is not perfect. Like, Bitcoin is not perfect for certain things. There is a massive ecosystem also being built in layer two solutions. And Ethereum has layer two solutions too, but it's also able to be changed which is not Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is this hard, super wonderful asset of money. Ethereum is not that. So this war between Bitcoin and Ethereum is nonsense. They're not even the same thing. So I started to get the internet of value, and we started to see the rise of DeFi, and I'll come on to that again. So you could start to see real applications that were getting massive network effects immediately. And then I put, Ethereum in the same terms as I looked at the network effects of Bitcoin, which was using essentially number of active wallet addresses. And it's a simplistic way of showing network effects. And what it showed was Metcalfe's law. When I put it against Bitcoin, if you see the chart here, you can see it's basically exhibiting the same traits as Bitcoin in Metcalfe's law, but actually the adoption's earlier and faster. And then when I put the chart of Ethereum against Bitcoin, starting at 5 million wallet addresses to rebase them to a point where network effects starts taking hold, their prices were identical and the chart patterns were identical, but they're about four years different. That was like, whoa. So these are being valued exactly the same at different points because it's only the network effect that's valuing them. And that was an incredibly exciting discovery. And I realized that the entire space is driven by network effects only. And that, you know, and then you understand that some tokens and some get network effect and then have S curve moments. So they start to look like they get adopted, nobody really uses it, and it falls. That's called the S curve. The S curve could be a failure or a pivot or a change in use, and then it goes. So we've seen that, we see that in businesses and startups all the time. Um, and we've seen it in Bitcoin, where the narrative has changed. Mount Gox, it's gonna be a scam. It's all about dirty money. Bitcoin goes off, 2013, S-curve. 
back up, exponential, it survives, and we go into the next set of FUD narratives, S-curve. That, that was the banning by China, the forking, and all the other stuff, S-curve. Then back up again, so now we've got the Lindy effect, which is basically, if you can't destroy it, it's gonna get stronger. Um, and Ethereum's going through the same, and this whole space goes through the same. Some fail, some that don't fail, get stronger. That was mind blowing to me. I now realized I had a framework of understanding that I could apply to anything within this space. So that was the big growth for me. And when you look at the speed of which this happens, because don't forget exponential means it gets faster all the time. In log charts, it looks normal. It's, a, it's kind of linear, but actually it's non-linear in its move. And we've seen this, I mean, I don't know, I, I had an interview with CZ who built Binance. In three years, he went to the largest crypto exchange and one and a half thousand employees. I think it's the fastest startup in history. Speaking to Sam at FTX, I mean, I don't know how he did it, but he got this whole from idea to launching in four or five months. And then a year later, the third largest exchange in the world. Look at Coinbase, 56 million accounts. That's more than Robin Hood and Fidelity added together. It's astonishing the network effect and we're bringing in the institutions and they're spreading into Ethereum and everybody else is building products on Ethereum. It's coming at a lightning speed. And it's, I don't think the space can catch up with the narrative change that is happening so fast. So institutional adoption and interest is quickly coming for Ethereum like it did for Bitcoin. Ethereum has outperformed Bitcoin since inception by 250%. And looking at the total addressable market Ethereum has, AKA the entire financial system, as opposed to Bitcoins, which would be the total market cap of gold, it's hard not to switch over your entire core crypto position from Bitcoin to Ethereum. And that's exactly what Raul Paul has gone and done. Putting his money where his mouth is, Raul revealed on May 2nd that he now has more ETH than Bitcoin, which is huge as last time he spoke on his crypto holdings, his Bitcoin outnumbered his Ethereum by 2 to 1, so you can see the conviction he now has in Ethereum. Now for some on-chain Ethereum data, first up from analyst Ki Yong Ju, we can see some major signs that the Ethereum run is just getting warmed up. First, evidence that US institutional investors are buying into Ethereum is that the ETH Coinbase premium has been significantly increasing since early 2021. Because Coinbase facilitates the majority of institutional buying, the increasing premium is a telltale sign of increased interest from the institutional scene. Also highlight in green is the amount of volume that has been going through in the first half of 2021, a very bullish sign that looks to continue. Second up, out from on-chain analyst Yan and Jan, we can see confidence in Ethereum is still very high as Ethereum continues to flow out of exchanges into cold storage or the ETH 2.0 staking contract. Even at all-time high price levels, it's crazy to see supply being taken off of exchanges, meaning investors are confident in future higher prices. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. Let me know in the comments what you think about switching your core crypto position from Bitcoin to Ethereum at this stage in the bull cycle. I'll see you all in the next video and as always, have a great day.